hello everybody and welcome back to our channel so today's video is i'm going to be making my pound cake along with my cream cheese white chocolate frosting so if you're interested to see how i make the cake and the frosting just keep on watching a lot of you know our oven broke down a couple of days before thanksgiving and because our oven was unrepairable we were um we got a new oven and so this will be my first time baking a cake in my brand new oven you guys so here's the oven you guys oh and i forgot to mention the brand the brand of the oven is a ge so uh the last oven we had before this one was a whirlpool gold and so here is the all the functions the only one thing i would say about the oven you guys is that it's very sensitive so with the smaller kids mainly noel she likes to come over here and push on the buttons and it's very sensitive so i notice i have to keep the control panel locked most of the time i don't have it locked right now but it usually is locked but it has a chime like i'm gonna i'm gonna start it for you guys so you guys can hear it and then it's how cool is that? So I'm going to go on and just start preheating the oven since we're going to need it anyway for the cake. Um, so these are all the functions. I'm so happy I know what proof is. Thank you guys for all my subscribers that told me what proof was. It has a steam clean, self clean, warm, time delay, cook, remote enable, oven light, all your numbers to punch in how high you want the oven. And here is what the inside of the oven looks like. So it's a pretty cool oven, you guys. I like it. Oh, and the oven is, it's, it's an electric oven, just in case anybody wanted to know. It is electric. And I was able to get the oven to match the appliances that I already have in my kitchen. So that was a plus too. But overall, you guys, I'm really happy with the oven. I, I am. I, I definitely know it is an upgrade from what we already had. That I cannot deny. So I have three cups of flour that I have already sifted. And as some of you may know, I love using the Bob's Red Mill Fine Pastry Flour. This, this flour to me is hands down the best flour to make cakes, breads, cookies, any type of bacon, I love to use this flour. Three cups of sugar, I have five eggs. Now with my eggs, you guys, the way that I do my pound cake is at the very end, I beat my white, my egg whites. I separate my eggs and then at the very end, I beat my egg whites and I fold my egg whites into the cake batter at the very end. So here are the five egg yolks and here are five egg whites. I also have one cup of milk as well as I have my, let me fold it back up. This is the Kerry Gold Butter and the way the care this one that i have is the bigger one so it's equivalent to two sticks of butter so you're going to need two sticks of butter oh i know what i forgot at room temperature so that's room temperature and you're going to need a half a cup of oil that i forgot so let's get that and i'm going to put this spray for my cake pan we'll put that there and this just vegetable oil So we're going to need a half a cup of oil. As I pour the oil in with the butter. And we are going to mix that until it is nice and fluffy. Okay, and so we're just going to uh, beat the butter and the oil until light nice and smooth and so this is how your butter should look after and now from here you're going to start adding a little bit of your sugar at it you don't want to just dump the whole thing of sugar in at once you want to start adding a little bit of sugar at a time So here we go. And you're going to beat this on like medium, I would say medium to low speed. So you're just going to add a little bit of the sugar. 
Let me do a little bit more. And then you're going to start mixing that. So I'm mixing mine on a number one. And you're going to do this, you guys, until it's all nice and fluffy. Now we're going to add a little bit more. And mix again. And for the last little bit, I'll just put the rest in there and we'll mix again. Okay, and now I am done mixing the butter and the sugar together. And when it's all done, you guys, it should look really fluffy. You see how it looks fluffy? That's how you want it to look. So we've done that. Now we are going to start incorporating our eggs. You're going to beat your eggs in one at a time until you don't see any more yellow. So let's start with the eggs. So you're just going to do one. There we go. And this usually only takes a few seconds to do this. Like, see, I don't see any more yellow. So you're going to stop it. I broke one of my yolks, you guys. So we'll just do two right there. Mix again so you don't see any more yellow. All done. And then this is the last two eggs. One of my egg yolks broke, but that's okay. We still want to get it in there. That was that. Let's do this last two. And now that is all finished. And so now you guys, we're going to start adding in our flour and our milk mixture. You're gonna add a little bit of the flour, incorporate that in until you don't see any more of the flour and then you'll do the milk. So you're gonna alternate. Now you're gonna start and end with the flour. So let's get started. So we're gonna do just a little bit of the flour. And remember you guys, this is three cups of flour that I, re that I sifted. So just add a little bit of the flour mixture. And you're gonna mix. And just mix it until you don't see any more of the white flour because you do not want to over mix your cake you guys that's what makes them come out kind of tough and so see that's a that's it that's about how long and now for the milk and this is one cup of milk just pour in a little bit of the milk mixture and beat that until all the milk is incorporated That's good. Now more flour. good and then this is the last of the milk get that going that's 
good. And the last of the flour. Now remember, you're going to begin and end with the flour mixture. Okay, you guys, and here are the five egg whites that I have, and here's my bowl. Just gonna pour those in here. Now with your egg whites, you guys, you are going to beat these on really, really high because you want them nice and fluffy. They're almost gonna look, they're gonna look like cool whip, whip topping when you're done with them. So let's get started. You're gonna beat this on as high as you can get it. So see how my egg whites are? You don't, like they're the consistency of like whipped cream, whipped topping. So that's how you want the egg whites. And so from here, you guys, we are going to take a half a table, a half a teaspoon of vanilla extract. Shake that up a little bit. And I usually put this in and fold this in. So half a teaspoon of vanilla you're going to pour that into the cake batter. And then, let me turn a little bit. And then you're just going to put the egg whites into the cake batter, you guys. And then you're just going to fold. So how I do it is I just kind of go, basically you just fold. That's it. Just go all the way around and then just fold. This is going to give your cake, you guys, that moisture. This is what's going to make the cake so light and fluffy and just moist. So, but also mind you guys, you don't have to do this step if you don't want to. This extra step is just something that I like to do, but by all means, you don't have to. If you choose, you can keep your eggs together. You don't have to separate them. And when you're adding in your and then you just add them in like you would um into the butter and the sugar mixture one at a time that's it and then that way if you don't want to do this part this extra step you do not have to and then if you didn't do the extra step that i'm doing right now your cake would be done and probably in the oven and it would probably be in the oven by now and so i just keep going all the way around folding until I don't see any more of the egg whites. And you're gonna be able to tell because you'll notice the difference in the consistency of your batter. So just keep folding. Just a little bit right here. Make sure I get those sides down and then you just fold. Just keep folding like that. Make sure I get some at the bottom. And you guys, I think that's pretty good. I don't want to overdo it because I don't want to toughen up my batter. And so now, and so now you guys, I am going to flop butter and flour my cake pan. And then we're going to get the cake in the oven. So you're going to cook your cake for about an hour and to anywhere from an hour and 10 to an hour and 20 minutes on 325 degrees. So everybody's oven varies. So usually what I do is around about the hour mark, I go in and I start checking my cake. And I use, because it is a cake and it's so high, I like bamboo skewers, <laughs> look y'all, tongue tied bamboo skewers i like to use these to stick in my cake to make sure it comes out clean because they're nice and tall a toothpick is not long enough to go all the way to, or you can use a knife you don't have to use these but i have these on hand so this is just what i use so i will go ahead and keep one out so let's get i'm gonna get my cake my pan 
battered and floured, and then I'm going to get it in the oven. So let's get this in the pan that I've oiled and floured already. And I'm just going around just making sure that I'm getting all the batter in here distributed evenly around the pan. this oven for an hour and I'm gonna do an hour and 10 minutes and there it is it's set so okay and now on to the frosting so what you're gonna need is you you are going to need one package of cream cheese uh, I believe it's eight ounce you'll need one eight ounce package of cream cheese you will also need vanilla extract. You will need four cups of powdered sugar that I have here, and I have it in my little sifter thing. So right here, I only have two cups, you guys, because my sifter's not big enough to fit all four cups, so I'll add the other cups in as I use this. And then I also have one tablespoon. You'll need one tablespoon of butter. You will also need one bar of the Ghirardelli white chocolate premium bacon bar, which is what I have in this bowl here that I'm going to go melt in the microwave really quick. And so here is the white chocolate. I've already, it's already been melted and I just melted it in the microwave for a few seconds. So that's melted and you are also going to need vanilla beans. Now this is optional. You don't have to do this part. So, cause I know I have, um, okay, here's the thing. If you have the vanilla extract, you don't need to use the vanilla beans. So I'm not gonna, I'm, I actually thought about it. I'm not gonna use both of these, especially since I already put vanilla extract in the cake. I'm not gonna use it in my frosting. I'm gonna use my vanilla beans instead, and that's normally what I do. But if you don't have any of the vanilla beans, just go ahead and use a little bit of the vanilla extract in your frosting. So for me, I'm gonna use, these are uh, Madagascar vanilla beans that I found at Costco. And so we are going to get started. Okay, so right now I have the cream cheese and the butter in a bowl. We are going to just start mixing that until nice and smooth. And it's a good idea if you let your, your cream cheese needs to sit out for at least a good two, at least a good two hours so it can be nice and soft. And also depending on, feel like I'm screaming you guys because I got the mixer going now depending on how much of a cream of a cream cheese taste you want your frosting to taste like you don't have to use the whole eight ounce bar uh, package you don't have to use the whole eight ounce package of your cream cheese sometimes I do and sometimes I don't sometimes I only use uh, half of the package but this time I decided I'm gonna use the whole package because the kids always tell me, mom, we like it to taste a little bit more like cream cheese. We want the cream cheese just a little bit uh, stronger taste. So this is the reason why I'm using the whole package. But like I said, you don't have to use the whole package if you don't want to. So I'm just gonna keep mixing this until it's nice and creamy.
looks good. So at this point, you guys, if you have vanilla, you'll put in your vanilla. Since I'm not using vanilla, I have my vanilla beans. I am going to add in my vanilla beans. Scrape some of the vanilla beans out. And this is all I'm using. I just scraped a little bit out of the vanilla of the bean. And I am going to go ahead and mix that in. Now you guys can't see it, but there's little speckles in here. And now I'm gonna start adding in my powdered sugar. Now you only wanna add in a little bit of powdered sugar at a time. The same as you, just like what we did with the cake, just a little bit at a time. So that's enough. And this, like I said, this is two cups in here. And usually, I usually have on hand anywhere between two to four cups of the powdered sugar, just depending on the sweetness, how sweet you want it. So I'm gonna taste it as I'm making it. So that way I can see how sweet I want it. So I would say just have anywhere from two to four cups of the powdered sugar, add a cup at a time. And if it's the sweetness that you want, after you've added in the amount of cups, then you can just stop. You don't have to add all four cups. Or you may want to add in all four cups. It really just depends on your taste and how sweet you want your frosting to be. Now, you guys, this is the easiest frosting you can ever make. I promise you, once you make this frosting, you will not like store-bought frosting ever again. You guys, I can't remember the last time I bought a jar of the store-bought frosting. I can't do it anymore. It seems like ever since I learned how to make my own, I cannot do store-bought frosting. You can tell that it just has a artificial taste to it. Like it almost tastes like, I don't know, something bad. <laughs> this is, and it's so easy to make homemade frosting. It's probably cheaper to make your own than it is to go buy that jar at the store that cost what? About two, three bucks. So I'm adding in more sugar. And I usually wait and add the chocolate in at the very end. So I'm putting in the last little bit of sugar. Remember to beat your frosting on high because you want that air to get in your frosting. That's what's going to make it nice and light and fluffy. taste a little bit of it just to see if I pretty good okay you guys so I ended up using about two and a half cups of the powdered sugar so that's why I said I would probably have on hand anywhere between two to four cups just depending on how sweet you like it and then I would after you've added in two cups just taste it to see if it's sweet enough for you or if you want it a little bit sweeter. And that's based off of using the whole package of cream cheese. Now, if you don't use the whole package of cream cheese, you probably won't need any more sugar. So you kind of want to balance out the sweetness and the cream cheese taste, you, you know. So now I'm gonna add in the melted white chocolate. And you're just gonna simply just pour it on in there. Just 
just mix. That is the best frosting. You can taste, I can taste the um, cream cheese. I can definitely taste the white chocolate. So it's almost like it's got a good balance of everything. So once again, my frosting, I use the whole eight ounce package of cream cheese and I use two and a half cups of the powdered sugar and I use one bar of the Ghirardelli white chocolate baking bar and I use, I would say I used about one fourth of a teaspoon of the vanilla beans. This really gives it a good flavor as well or if you don't have the vanilla beans, like I said before, you can just use regular vanilla extract. And as y'all can see in the back over there, my cake is done. Uh, it's looking pretty good. I could smell it. It's one thing about when, you, when you're a baker, you can smell when your stuff is done. It's like you just know. And I started smelling it. So I set my timer for an hour and 10 minutes just because it's a new oven and I needed to get a feel of it. And I'm so glad that I did because actually my cake was done in an hour and five minutes. So I, so now I know that when I'm making a pound cake, I can set my oven for an hour and five minutes and it's done. So I'm going to let my cake cool. I actually have a cooling rack, which I'm going to go ahead on and do that right now. Let me turn you guys around so you can see what I'm doing. So I have a cooling rack right here and I'm just going to take it like this and do it like this and I'm just gonna let that sit let me see so here you have it you guys the finished product I think I like my oven for baking my cakes it looks pretty good so we'll see how it tastes and see if it's nice and moist how my oven how my other oven used to do it so and then I have my frosting right here so I'm just gonna frost the cake and then we'll be all done. And normally what I do, um, if you guys make your, if you make your frosting before your cake is done cooling, I would just make sure that you put some type of plastic wrap over the top of the bowl or if you have a bowl that has a lid, just make sure that you cover it so that it doesn't start to create a, a crust on the top of it. It'll start to harden on the top if you don't cover it up while you're waiting for your cake to cool. So that's what I did while the cake was cooling. And so now I'm gonna start frosting the cake. So. Get a sauce. Push this back a little bit. And then. I don't even know if I'm even going to use all this icing, you guys. So there's, I don't, there's no fancy way that I. So here's my cake, you guys, all finished. My cake is still a little bit warm. I can tell because my icing is kind of sliding down a little bit. But here is the finished product of my cake. All done and there you have it you guys that will do it for my pound cake and my frosting recipe 
As always, I appreciate you guys watching. And remember, you are fearfully and wonderfully made and everything else the Word of God says you are.